how God talks to you. So I want to just say Happy Mother's Day. I love being a mother. And I, I didn't give birth to my children. I adopted them. They're biological brothers. They have the same mother, but not the same father. And how they came to me was pretty miraculous. And I feel like it was one of the greatest gifts of my life. The topic today is, you know, how to give, uh, give the best of yourself to the world. And, and being a mother calls you to that place. It calls you to bring your best. And so my children um, have nurtured me, supported me, lifted me, guided me, made me crazy, <laughs> called a lot for prayer. But I got to be uh, a confidant. I got to be a teacher. I got to be a nurse. I got to be a healer. I got to be a, a driver and a baseball mom. And every single part of it, it was really about my children mirroring back to me the fact that they were my great teachers. Asking me to stand up and show up in a way that was, that was bigger than I thought. So the children came to me, the youngest one came to me before the, the older one. And, um, and he had some challenges, and we had him in therapy, and, and we, had him, we were working with him. And it was, it was uh, high school time, and he was wanting to go to college, but he wasn't doing great in school. And so we got tutors, and we had him go through an SAT training and do all this stuff, and someone helped him write the paper so that he could get into college. And I'll never forget that the... the, the, the Door flew open, and my son, who's not Mr. Uh, Expressive, leaps into the room and says, they accepted me, and he's running around the house for about going to school on the East Coast, and everybody's yelling, and everybody's screaming, and it's so joyous, right? And he's, gonna, he's going to uh, be on his own for the first time. About a week later, he says to me that his girlfriend isn't happy about that. <laughs> I say, baby, be careful. Women can control your life. <laughs> he says, oh, ma, please. Mm-hmm. So... Two months later, uh, Ma, we need to talk. I said, yes. Well, she's pregnant and we're getting married. Okay, now I'd like y'all to think that I was spiritual, but no. need to be educated and I go off on this thing and his back is to me right he flips around and he says this is my life I get to choose and aren't you supposed to be a spiritual leader <laughs> aren't you supposed to be loving and honoring and I don't feel very honored right now and he turns around goes and slams the door in my face. Oh! I said, okay, I need to do something now, people, right? So, so I call my friend who lives around the corner. I said, you better come over here now. And Michael Beckwith was there, right? He said, I'm bringing Michael with me. I said, good. <laughs> so, they come, and my friend goes in the room with my son, and Michael is with me, and I'm ranting and raving, and I'm pacing, and I'm doing all this, and he's just looking at me. <laughs> and he says, who is your son? I was like, what? 
Now, today I know that was a pattern interrupt, but at the time, I'm like, is he crazy? So I said, you know who he is? He goes, no, who is your son? I said, I'm not understanding. He said, I know how he's acting, but who is he? He said, I need you to get a three by five card and I need you to write Sharon is on the top. And I need you to write all of the qualities that he possesses. Because he said, I want you to speak him. I said, well, he's, you know, when he's not acting crazy, he's loving and he's, <laughs> and he's an artist and he's, and he's, um, he's, um, really creative and all these, and I, so I start writing all these things down. He said, now listen, you're trying to talk to a mind that isn't fully developed and thinks they know. His soul can hear you when his mind can't. And so you are to carry this card around and the moment you want to be in judgment, the moment you want to step out of loving, the moment you want to be in a place where you, you think you know better about his life than he does, pull out the card. I want you to know that card went with me for a lot of years because he, tra <laughs> he, he didn't transform overnight. I, even though that was the prayer. So listen, when y'all are praying, listen, there's no time in God, okay? But you have to know that that energy and that, and that grace and, and, and that loving that connects you to your child or to another is always present, is always flowing. So my kids now are in their 40s. And what I've learned is that I had to have humor. I had to have humor with the choices they were making because I saw them make extraordinary wins and then I saw them make some colossal blunders. So I made a mother code and I'm gonna share it with you and feel free to use any of these. <laughs> Thou shalt remember that there is always room for your children no matter how old they are and how many times they want to move back home. <laughs> Thou shalt understand that your money is their money because they will be asking you for contributions. <laughs> Thou shalt smile and be quiet when they bring home the love of their life and you can clearly see that they're challenged and somewhat damaged. not give advice unless they ask and even then think about what you say because it could come back to haunt you. <laughs> Thou shall not date anyone too much younger than you and if you do, don't introduce them to your children until you know you're going to put a ring on it. <laughs> Thou shall trust that your kids have the same God as you to make choices. So I'm talking about mothers here, but what I want you to know is that what if we all had within us the consciousness of a mother? What if we had within us the loving, the nurturing, the caring that, that, that was available to lift and shift on this planet? What if that energy was so clear about our evolution. Because mothers have to evolve, because children are changing. And you know, if we're looking at the world, if we're looking at the planet, why not look at the place and, and the understanding that we are called? We are called to bring love on a whole nother level. You know, God loves us with all our stuff, without judgment, without, without um, turning its back on us. And that's what we do for our children, right? No matter how many times they act crazy, we find a way to let them back in, right? Because, because of the love. 
But I'm asking you, when we think about this, how do you bring your best self to the planet? How do you bring your best self to the loving? Because love harmonizes. Because love deconstructs those old ways of being and opens the heart for the divine to express because it can only express through us. I, I want you to know that as I have uh, grown with my mother, um, and, and as she was leaving the planet, she said, I need you to sit down. And she sat several of us down, really, to tell us what we meant to her. And to tell us all the lessons she had learned from us. And I thought, you know, I don't want to leave the planet without the people I love knowing what I feel for them and, and how I care for them. I also don't want the ways in which I serve on the planet for anyone to not feel like they belong. Because at the core of our being, that's what we all want. We want to belong. We want to be seen. We want to be heard. We want to be understood. And we want to be acknowledged. And what I want you to know, though, is that, is that if that's what we all want, that's what we're called to give. You know, the love that is divine is so pure. Yesterday, Dr. David and I were here with a group of people and we did, uh, we did a prayer workshop and we invited people to come and we put them in circles. And, um, you know, a mother holds the high watch for her children, especially when they learn to drive, <laughs> right? <laughs> And, but holding the high watch really is about, we talked about it last week about that high noticing. It's really about understanding that no matter what, God is present. No matter what, the divine is moving and revealing itself. No matter what, the universe is in the flow. And so, and so when you're in that place, you get to lift. And so we asked the people in the room yesterday, we put them in circles. And we looked at a lot of different things, you know, health in, in, in the physical world, health in the mental world. We looked at, at health in the finances and on the planet and with our world leaders. And what we did was we brought into the room our feelings and opinions and thoughts about those things. And then we moved into prayer. And we moved into prayer in circle with chambers of prayer. And, and a chamber of prayer is when everybody in the circle, in the room, prays out loud at the same time. It's, it's a vibration raiser. And David said something so powerful. He said, think about this. When we're all praying together, when you're doing a chamber of prayer, what you are doing is those prayers are going into the walls of the temple of humanity. And so we did that for two hours. We, we looked at those certain things, because here's the thing. We are having a human experience, and there's stuff going on. And you cannot deny it, and you cannot run away from it. And by the way, you can't pray it away or meditate it away. You've got to deal with it, right? But you deal with it by understanding that it's present, that there's nothing outside of you that has power over you, and that you can, in any given moment, choose. Choose what you think. Choose how you behave. Choose what rolls out of your lips. Choose what you send on that email. You get to choose. And so what you want to do in the, in, in the moment is to get clear about what you're feeling and then and then decide how you're going to, to move. But then you have to be responsible to the commitment. I, I coach a lot of people all over the world, and they come in and they've got these great intentions and everybody's really excited and they wanna do all this work. And then I give them the work. And then some of them just soar and others kind of drift off. And I, 
And then they come back later and I go, where were you? Well, there were some things that were happening. I said, oh, you got distracted. <laughs> well, no, I got, I said, yes, you got distracted. I said, how many times will you allow distractions to take you off purpose? How many times will you allow your you're being bombarded with energy and information to take you out of the divine flow. Because you get to choose and the universe will wait. It will wait for you. I think I said last week when I was here, you know, it's like, it's not enough for you to just come to church and be fed on Sunday. <laughs> or to take a class every now and then. Your practice is daily. That's how you bring out the best of you. You tap into that, that part of you that's connected to the infinite, that's conspiring for your goodness and your greatness, and you do it daily because that is the thing that's gonna have you listen more deeply. That's the thing that's gonna anchor you more profoundly. That's the thing that's gonna, that's gonna open you to creative ideas that you didn't even know existed. That's gonna put you in front of people that can, that can support you and, and, and nurture you and lift you in ways that are totally unexpected. I love um, staying with David and Ty because I get to hear Ty, uh, David stories and they're, and they're great. And, and David is a manifester of what I'm talking about because of what he's committed to and how he's committed, things consistently and constantly show up in unexpected and, and sometimes crazy looking ways, right? <laughs> But it's because he's committed to God, he's responsible to that commitment, and he takes action. You know, you can set an intention all day long, but if you do not take the action to bring it into form, it's just an idea. It's just a concept. You want to bring the best of yourself to the world. That means all of your talents. That means all of your gifts. That means in every single moment, you get to be a loving presence. I wanna to read to you from, from Pathway of Roses because, because when you move into that space where you are in your best self, then you get to move into a space of giving and receiving that's profound says, we must give forth into real life more and more of our own inherent greatness. Be of great use in the world, and you give more and more in the world. In response, the world will bring your own to you. We cannot receive the largest possible measure from any source unless we give all we have the power to give whenever we have the privilege to do so. Live a great life where you are. Hide nothing that has worth. Use every talent in full measure. Bring forth into life and usefulness the highest powers that you know you possess, and you will enter into a greater and greater life until you finally reach the supreme heights of exalted spiritual attainments. You are an original imprint. There's no one like you on the planet. There's no one that has the skills, the gifts, the light, the love, and the way of expressing that you do. And I, I tell people all the time, if you withhold those gifts, if you withhold that light, if you withhold that love, you deprive the people that need it. You deprive the places that need it. You deprive the consciousness in the world that needs to be fed with more love and more light. You are called 
to be in such a flow that you understand that that the activation of the law of circulation isn't just about money. It's about everything. Your smile can transform a life. Your words of appreciation can take people into the heart in a way that you did not even know existed. Your presence can bring a smile to someone's face who's in despair. There is within you so much glory, so much expanded awareness. You have everything you need right this minute. And if you share it, the universe must correspond. I didn't, I didn't used to tithe because in my family we were going to the poor house so we needed every penny we could, we could muster up. At least that was the conversation and when Edwin Gaines was sitting, I was sitting in a room and she's talking about tithing, my mind was kind of blown and she said, well, and you don't have to start with the whole 10%, start with 2%. And, I, and so I started doing that. And, and things started shifting in my financial world. And then I caught that what if, it, what, if, what if that happens everywhere? What if I'm willing to give of myself? What if I'm willing to show up and be more loving and be more kind and be more em, uh, embracing? What if, I'm, what if I do that? Will it come back to me? And I want you to know that it's a resounding yes. If you want to have more profound work in the world, then give the best that you have where you are. I was working for this corporation and I was, I was unhappy. And I, 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 but, but you know, I had to take care of my kids and I was, I was in a, a, a master's program. And, um, and so I really, the, the self-talk was bringing my energy down. And I knew it, but I couldn't stop it, right? And so I talked to God, and I said, listen, I need you to help me. And so I got in my car, and I turned on the radio, and, and the person says, and our guest today is Michael Beckwith. He follows me around. I just want you to know that. <laughs> and he says, OK, caller, go ahead. So the woman says, I'm in this job I hate. <laughs> she says, I just, you know, I have other things I want to do, and I, and I, you know, I just, I just don't even want to come in here. I feel sick when I'm coming in. So Michael said, oh, are you standing in excellence where you are? And I'm in the car, and I'm going, He said, listen, why should the universe give you more if you're not honoring where, what you got? Everybody breathe. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to ask you that. Why should the universe give you more if you are not honoring what you have, appreciating what you have, are grateful for what you have, and standing up and standing in your excellence and, in, and bringing the best. Because if you do, a couple of things will happen. The place that you are at will be transformed or you will be moved. But if you leave without the transformation, you will take it with you and you will repeat the class. I want you to know that, that I'm very honored to be here with you. I, I, I'm very honored to, to, to witness and experience what's happening in this community. That, that you said, you know what? What, happen if, what happens if really, you know, 
we can blow the roof off. And, and, and we can go into different ways of expressing spiritual community. What happens if we can actually reinvent ourselves to be more inclusive, more expansive, more powerful, more abundant? What that means is, is that everybody here has an opportunity to bring the best that they have to offer in their relationships, in their families, in their neighborhoods, in their communities, in this state, in this country, out in the world. We all get to choose to bring the best of who we are. And by doing that, that world that works for everyone becomes a reality. Because I'm going to go back to the point that says, we all belong. Whether we like each other, <laughs> whether we agree with each other, whether we, whether we would run it differently, we all belong. Hi, I'm David Ault, and I simply want to say thanks. Thanks for taking the time to watch our broadcast here at Spiritual Living Center of Atlanta. We have a vision, and that vision is to reawaken all to their spiritual magnificence. And one of the ways that we are able to do that is through this very medium of broadcasting. So if you got anything out of this, if you felt in any way inspired or if something spoke to you directly, then I extend an invitation to you to become a part of our family by donating. And there are many ways in order for you to be able to do that. One is to simply go to our website at slca.com and there you will find all different kinds of prompts that will help you support what it is that we are doing here in Atlanta. One way is to become a pledger. That means that you decide on a monthly basis that you are going to help us with this vision. Another way is to donate through our management system called Fellowship One, another through PayPal, and another even easier way is on your cell phone. You can do what's called text to tithe, and that number is 404 796 7030. Again, thank you so much for your support, and I invite you to come back weekly to see what it is that we're up to. Blessings. <laughs>